What up, guys? I'm here today with my special guest. This is my friend Kevin. The reason why What's Kevin up, is here. What up, bro? The reason why Kevin is here is because he's been in U.S. Army for Air quite Force. A time. Air Force. Air Force. Oh, Air I Force. Air Force. U.S. Army. No, no, it's okay. See, life is full of surprises. Boom. All right. So, Kevin, can you tell us something about it? Because I'm like really interested in know why people ever nowadays go to the army if it's because they believe in something or because if it's money well i'm from here l.a as you know and now they know what's part of l.a westchester like by venice el segundo culver city nice. on the edge of inglewood my journey into the military began my father's actually 24 years retired army did he serve in like uh like combat yeah yeah he did he was in the gulf they call it, no not not uh he served um he went to panama to go get manuel noriega in um operation just cause he was a ranger with second battalion they jumped in and got shot at while they were in the air and they took an airfield funny story he's got a picture of manuel noriega one of his safe houses and they thought someone was in there and they shot up the whole house and they hit everything but the bed um yeah there's that but um yeah my family military history stretches back all the way to world war one my great-grandfather served in World War I in the 369th Infantry, an all-black infantry unit. Uh, my grandfather served in the Army. He actually lied on his paperwork to get in. He was 14, but he was bigger than me. What? So, yeah, my well, grandfather. Somebody bigger than you. You should see my pops. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, he lied on his entry form, went in at 14. Uh, my dad served in the Army from, in the, he first went in 75, got out. Went back in in the 80s, did the Ranger thing, went to uh, Panama. Well, my, my brother served and my little brother is serving in so the Air Force too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Military family. Military family. But not always like, you know, of course, like in the first of all, there's no Air Force, but. Right, right, right. So. The Air Force didn't come about till 1947 mm -hmm. as its own branch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, after about four years in community college, I got bored. I started getting better grades, but I got bored. So I went to the Army recruiter. My dad kind of pushed me. He didn't know about it. He didn't push me into the military or anything. I went on my own volition. Mm -hmm. um, he kind of said, why don't you try the Air Force? So I went to an Air Force recruiter. Um, I signed up for a job called Combat Control, where you jump out of planes, do scuba diving, shoot guns, control airfields, call in airstrikes, things like that. After about a year of waiting, I finally got into basic. Um, about 10 months later, I did not make a portion of the training. Why? I quit. You quit? So yeah. your decision? Yeah. Okay. I quit. Looking back, I kind of, I'm 50-50 about it. Sometimes I wish I had stayed and done the whole thing. Other times, you know what, I did my time, whatever. I quit. They made me an aircraft mechanic on the B-52. It's got eight engines, screams really loud, drops a lot of bombs. Did that for four years and I got out. Now, back to your question about why do people join the military. For me personally, I was young, I was 22, I was super idealistic. So I did have a sense of pride, if you will, duty, I'd say just short of patriotism. But I tend to see through people's BS, even yours, on the map. The rhetoric that they tell you in the military, I wasn't sold on it. Not to say that I'm not patriotic, I love the USA, I would rather be here than some of the places I have been except Australia, but... Um, <laughs> Why Australia? <laughs> and um, don't forget, we have to also mention the Germany because you told me about it and you love it over there. I, I, it was England. It I went to England, England oh, for okay. a month. I, I do love England. I wish we had a chance to go to other countries in Europe. Uh -huh. I wasn't able to go, so I missed out. All right. But I would love to go. Europe is awesome. Yeah. Okay, back to patriotism. Patriotism, yeah. Me, I went primarily for I was looking at the future school was getting expensive um, I knew that if I had joined the military they pay for benefits as far as school goes on top of me I was kind of an idiot I wanted to like shoot guns shoot and guns. blow stuff up and things like you, that you were just American it's you were American I guess right? so yeah. yeah I guess so. <laughs> you to have money and shoot it, shoot I guess it. so right yeah for me that was it um, as far as other people go I have a lot of friends who join because they're on their last leg. Maybe they're running out of money. Maybe they have kids and they can't find a good job. Mm -hmm. Maybe they went to school, got a degree and they can't get a good job. Or they went to school and got a degree in something mm -hmm. that isn't necessarily a big money maker. Mm -hmm. Like today, a lot of kids are going to school for psychology. 
-hmm. And I implore every kid going to psychology, go to private practice, you're gonna make more money. But for me, I went primarily for school and I wanted to shoot guns and blow stuff up. It didn't end up that way, but. So you said you, you did some mechanic work for B-52, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a big bomber. Yeah. So did you have any like fuck ups or something like oh, that? Oh, all the time. All the time? Yeah, nothing is perfect. It take time to learn, right? Absolutely. Um, it's an older airframe. I heard, and I don't know how true this is, I heard they came up with it on a napkin. Somebody drew it on a napkin, and then the guys at Boeing said, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. That's what they said. Well, that's what I was, really what I heard. Not they as in Boeing, but that's what I heard. It's an old plane. You really have to, uh, there's a lot of manual labor, mm -hmm. like the tires and brakes. There's 36 nuts and bolts. You have to manually take each one off, as opposed to other airframes that were upgraded in the 80s where it's quick disconnect. You pop three or four things, and the tire comes off things like that. B-52 is totally different. Um, okay. It's very hands-on. Uh -huh. And I was stationed in, as you know, North Dakota. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was laughing at him the entire time. Because I never met anyone who ever been in North Dakota. <laughs> and he's like the first one who spent there some quite a time. Yeah. So tell us more about the life on the base. So you got in, you served there as a mechanic, you've been there some time, and now you are in North Dakota and tell us about it. Do you have to go also through some like military training training or it's more for you about the skills that you can perform on the aircraft? Yes, the second one. So you do every, everybody that joins the military enlisted. They go through, in the Air Force it's called tech school. Mm -hmm. um, in the Navy it's called A school. Mm -hmm. um, in the Army it's called AIT. Um, Marines, I don't know what they call it. They're, they're, they're weird. But, uh, I went to tech school for about three months to learn my job, um, to work on the B-52. And then after they, they assign you to a base, I was unlucky enough, in my opinion, to say that I served in Minot, in Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota. Very cold up there. I landed on the flight. I actually came back home first for about three weeks, and then I jumped on the flight at LAX, went to Minneapolis, connecting flight to Minot, because you can't fly directly to Minot. I stepped off the plane in the town of Minot, negative 71 degrees. Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Dude, that's way more than like negative 20 Celsius, way more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So way the more. so the negative 71 includes the wind chill because yeah. the winds are yeah, 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 super yeah. devastating crazy. up there. So ambient, it might have been like minus 25 or minus 30, mm -hmm. which honestly is normal mm -hmm. around January, February. Those are the mm -hmm. coldest months. I get to the base and then life started from there. I went on a couple of TDYs, went to Las Vegas for two weeks, Australia for 10 days. I really want to go back there. England for a month. TDY is temporary duty. Oh, okay. um, we went for a mission in, more like a training mission, in England for about a month. Uh, we went for an exercise. Um, and there was actually multiple militaries there when I was in Vegas. We had um, uh, the Norwegian Air Force mm -hmm. was there. Oh, and I also went to Guam for six months. It's a U.S. territory Damn, in the Pacific how is Ocean. Guam? It's like it must so it must be so unique ec ecosystem, right? Since it's like so isolated from like all other islands, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, you're absolutely right. It's like a mini Hawaii. I don't know if you've ever been <laughs> no, to Hawaii. I've never been in Hawaii, but it's pretty expensive. Uh -huh. It's not as expensive in Guam, and it's still a U.S. territory. So if you were to take a flight to Guam and you land there and you jump in a car, it's gonna be the same driving laws here. They still use American money. You're gonna see a lot of Japanese tourists. The food is really good. Uh -huh. And the people are really, 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 really nice. Okay, so once you got to the base and you were just past that three months training at that point, right? Mm -hmm. And they told you, okay, this is your plan. Now do your work. It's, it's kind of like that. So there's a lot of things you have to do. You have to like check into the base and they have to get your medical and your dental and stuff How ready like take? that. Like days, weeks, They hours. give you about two weeks, if I remember. Mm -hmm. And I might even be exaggerating on the two weeks. Mm -hmm. But they do give you ample time to get acquainted to the base. After that time, then you begin your job. Um, when you get there, you don't really know how it works because you've been in a training environment. It's totally different than doing the real thing. You spend some time actually going out doing the job like refueling the plane, defueling the plane, taking the fuel off, maybe that plane is doing another mission or something and they, it all depends on higher headquarters, what they call H, 
HQ, higher headquarters mm -hmm. HHQ, changing tires and brakes, changing windows, changing panels, things like that. It really all depends on their mission. So your idea of going to military to have fun and shoot their weapons was not quite... Absolutely not. Full, right? No, but I did have fun nonetheless. Yeah. A day in the life. I wake up, I spent most of my time on what's known as swing shift, which runs from about two to midnight. And there's really no set time, but you have to be there around two to turn over because guys on the day shift are running the things. It's, there has to be 24 hour coverage on all the planes. Wake up around noon, probably play a video game or two on the Xbox. <laughs> Shower, get ready, drive to work, um, get turnover. I became what's known as the tow driver. So planes would land and they'd sit on the middle of the taxiway and I get in this thing we call a uke. You can see him down at uh, LAX mm -hmm. and they hook up a giant tow bar to him and we push him back or pull him to different spots. And I pretty much did that for like six hours into my shift and then we do a post flight on them. So it's basically servicing oil, making sure there's no bird strikes or anything crazy happened to the uh, physical frame of the aircraft. Do you refill the, the ammunition as well or no? Oh no, they have, that's all totally separate career field. Mm -hmm. um, most of the missions we flew in the Air Force did not have missions, or excuse me, did not have weapons rather. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that did have weapons, the weapons crews would come out and load the planes. I did interview with Jonathan, the Blue Belt from Academy, mm -hmm. and he was the one who was refilling the ammunition uh, when he was in military. Oh well. yeah, because he's prior service army, that's right. Yes. After we push him back and do post flights, we might do refuels for the rest of the night, we might do extra maintenance, whether that's, like I said, changing tires and brakes, maybe a window broke on this plane, we gotta change the window. Mm -hmm. Maybe the panel's busted, mm -hmm. change the panel. Maybe the hydraulic fluid is a little low, servicing the hydraulic fluid. Those planes leak really, really, really bad. Yeah, that's pretty much a normal day. Around 11.30 midnight, we go home. There was a time, we did this for like six months. We would go to the gym and play basketball till like three in the morning. And then I'd go to bed at like four. Damn. And then So next you pretty day. much lived more at night than yeah. during the day, right? Yeah. So have you spent the entire length of Whew. your service over there? No. So believe it or not, I was actually away from Minot Air Force Base doing TDYs and more than I was on it. Just because every time there was a... I also spent time at Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota. Was there what for six win? months. What yeah, what I know. So, yeah, um, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to be able to just go different places. Whenever there was an opportunity to leave, if I wasn't picked, I volunteered. Not to say I hated my not, but... Yeah, you wanted to see more. Yeah, yeah. De definitely. So, yeah. I think that is definitely, that's another reason why I picked the military out of college, because there's a huge world out there, despite, and I hate this saying, uh, it's a small world. I don't believe that. I, I think the world is incredibly big. There's still a bunch of places I haven't seen. Like I told you before, I do want to go back to Europe. I want to, all those little countries are so close, you know, you could just go anywhere you want. Yeah. Um, Asia was awesome. I would like to go back to Asia. Maybe not Guam, but <laughs> Australia, Japan. I'd like to go to Korea sometimes. So yeah. why you liked England so much and also what did you do in England? At that point in my short um, Air Force career I transitioned from being a mechanic to working behind a desk. Um, I debriefed pilots so they would come in after missions and I would get certain information from them mostly just uh, airframe information so um, the time the mission lasted, um, flight time on each engine. So I didn't really have a hands-on gig, per mm -hmm. se, when we were in England. Mm -hmm. What I did do a lot in England was we went into the little town and went to Swindon and we partied pretty hard. Um, my chief actually told us we had to be back on base at midnight and I wasn't doing that. <laughs> I was coming back much later. Was that a trouble for you? No, you only get in trouble if they find out. Uh -huh. So. So now they will find out. No, no one found out. We did that in uh, Australia too. Uh -huh. My ten days, my ten days in Australia were short, but myself and two other friends, we probably got two hours to three hours of sleep every night. We would go in the morning, we would hurry up and fix the plane, and then we'd go out on the town, and then we'd come back to base, and then we'd go out all night. You as a American soldiers in foreign airmen. Country, 
Airman. 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 I'm sorry. It's okay. So, you are in a different country. How does the locals accept you as Americans? Let's say in Britain. In England, everyone kept asking us about Trump. <laughs> It was 2016, but it was about the summer was, of 2016. Okay, so, was talking about it. so he was running for president, and they, I, I got myself when we first got there. I got a lot of questions about Donnie Trump. So they were curious about your domestic politics. Absolutely, and absolutely. Well, he wasn't the president at the time. Yeah. As a service member, you're not supposed to down the president. Yeah, of course. Because he's the commander in chief. Mm -hmm. He runs yeah, 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 yeah. the show. We got a lot of questions about life in Los Angeles because, uh, you know, hey, where are you from? I'm from L.A. Oh, Los Angeles. Like, yeah, I'm from Los Angeles. They would ask about the gang life here and uh, certain movies on Netflix. Like, is that real life? And I'd have to tell them, like, not exactly. <laughs> it's not like that really anymore. Um, it was kind of rough in high school. Have you ever like witness any like a hate that they were telling you like oh what are you doing here or local guys wanted to like fight you or something That's not in girls. england not in england so where? Tell in, australia. in australia in australia this we were about maybe five days in halfway through the trip the only hate i got in australia we were at the club for all the black guys in america you go to australia they love you but um the women the women Women. I mean, if you're into men, that's your thing. But uh, for me, the women were really into me because of the accent that I don't hear, but they clearly do. I did get a little hate. Um, a drunk guy kind of stopped me. I was kind of talking to a lot of different females. And he was drunk, and he kind of grabbed me and was like, hey, man, you're kind of taking all our women, and I'm not really appreciative of that. And I'm kind of just like, all right, bud, you kind of got to step back. Like. It's not that serious. What that was pretty much the only hate I got. What could happen if you would possibly get into a fight? If I got into a fight with a local, um, they'd probably come down on me harder than their him. local government or their local police would come down hard on him. You are not just representing yourself and where you come from, but uh, the name tape says United States Air Force, United States Navy, Marine Corps, Army, whatever. So yeah, you are representative of I was a representative of the country as well. Another little quick story. We had a guy that did not come back on time. We reported to the plane to work, and we didn't see this guy. I can't remember his name, but he showed up at the front of the base around 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Mind you, we have to be at our meeting place around 6 in the morning, like ready to go to the plane. Our NCOIC, or non-commissioned officer, in charge of the whole gig uh, was asking around, like, where is this guy? And we all, we all did, literally did not know. A couple people he hung out with said, oh, he kind of left us last night or whatever. Dude shows up six and a half, seven hours later. My master sergeant was like, all right, that's it. No one leaves the base for anything. So we were locked down. We go about our day. I go to the gym. I go get some lunch. I'm back in my room, it's about 4 p.m. there, I take a little nap, it's 8 o'clock, I get up, and what I normally was doing in Australia was I was ironing my clothes, getting ready to go out. Even though our boss just told us, hey, you guys aren't leaving the base, I don't know what caused me to do it, but I start ironing my clothes, and one of my friends comes in the room and he's like, what's up, man? And I'm like, we're doing this, aren't we? He's like, all right, and so like, I hit up my other friend, and the three of us snuck out on base probably the last three or four nights we were there. What happened after you got back? Oh, no one knew. No one knew? No one knew. I told you. You, you, would be in jail you don't now. get... Oh, I, we would have gotten in trouble. There was an incident involving police in Australia. The three of us were... We had four people this time. So, Richie, I still hate you for this. He got drunk. He said he was okay. The three of us are clearly wasted. Like, there's no way we can drive back to the base. They drive on the opposite side than we do. So, the left, left yeah. side, yeah. There's a checkpoint. Oh my God, there's a checkpoint. And this guy drives onto the curb and off of it, in front of Australian police. Me and a couple of my friends were like, this is it. We're done, it's over, we're getting kicked out. Like, that's the only thing running through our minds, like, we're finished. Because you are from LA, you know what, what will happen. You're oh, here. yeah, oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. The Australian cops like, hey, how you guys doing? We're fine. It's like, you guys been drinking? And the driver, Richie, it's like, yeah, they have in the back. And he's like, what about you? Have you had any drinks? He's like, yeah, I have. And we're like, what 
are you doing? The cop's like, uh, how many? Richie says, oh, I've had about two beers. I want to say he got breathalyzed and he passed and they let us go. He passed? I know he, I know he passed the test because I remember getting back to the base. After that, we kind of just decided we're just not going to take any vehicles. We're just going to, their version of Uber and Lyft, we use that for the remainder of our Dude, Black Ops missions. It looks like you had a lot of fun there. In Australia? Oh, I had loads. I had loads. So you just went there, fixed some planes real quick, and then went to party. Went to party. What made you to quit after four years then? You know, most people would not like to quit such a life. They tried to get me to stay. Yeah? Yeah. I tried to change my job. I wanted to go back. I, I kind of got my mind together and started working out better, started getting back in shape. And I wanted to do the shoot guns and blow stuff up thing again. At the time it was open, I applied early and they lost my paperwork or did something wrong. So I kind of was discouraged about that. I tried again and there was just too many hoops for me to jump through. So I kind of just said, you know what? I'm done with their games. I'm just gonna go okay. live my life. Do you think like that being in the, as a part of the military is good financially? Absolutely. I mean, you get paid every 1st and 15th. I don't know about all the branches, but Air Force, you get paid a little bit more. Pay is based on your rank. So there's nine enlisted ranks and there's, oh, I'm not totally sure. I think there's nine officer ranks, but your pay is based on your rank. I made about 34, 35,000 a year. Not incredibly a lot. For my not, that's awesome. But yeah, we have to count to that that it's North Dakota. Yeah, right? absolutely. It's a lot of money with that in LA, and it's like a poverty line pretty much. Yeah, right? that's that's you not can't even pay a rent on that. No. Most people that didn't have much growing up, yeah, that might be a lot to yeah. them, you know? Yeah. Well if you are like on the border of Inglewood, that's a good Probably, thing. maybe. Yeah. Depends on so that was the main thing. So they lost your application plus the, uh, plus the money and everything. And you kind of like said, OK, I did my service and now I'm just going to get out. Do you have any benefits right now from what you did in the, in the past in those four years or? No? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, education benefits that I'm currently using. They do give you a little ID card. I can still go on the Air Force, uh, LA Air Force Base. Basically says I, I'm an inactive reservist. Mm -hmm. So everyone that signs up, I don't know if it is now because it's been three years, but when I got in, when I went in in 2013, you had an eight year obligation. Mm -hmm. um, I went for four, so I have four years of inactive reserve left. Mm -hmm. If something was to terribly go wrong, like World War III kicks off, they would come. To get you. Yeah. Hey, we need you. Draft you. So the draft ended in 1973. Mm. So right now there is no draft. I know uh, there was a scare mm -hmm. earlier in the year about the draft with the whole Iran thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the draft ended in 1973. So the Department of Defense, as far as uniform military services go, became an all volunteer force in 1973. You went there as a regular guy, right? Yeah. You, had, you can get the opportunity to learn something new, see Absolutely. the world, make some money, make Absolutely. some friends. And you don't, all you need to do is just want, right? Absolutely. I, you know, you're absolutely right. Um, I believe you can't want for anyone else if you don't want for yourself. For anyone that's out there wanting something, mm -hmm. go get it. Go get it. And it not always have to be military, but... That's absolutely one. not. It's absolutely not. Guys, if you have any questions, you can write them down in the comments. Uh, I'm sure we, like, skip so many things about the training and about everything else. But this time we can uh, maybe do one more chapter where Kevin can answer all your questions. And I think that's it. Thanks, bro, for coming. Go do jujitsu. Go jujitsu. See you on the mat. Thanks for doing that. Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye.